Okay. Um, so my name is Chuck Page. I'm a candidate for state assembly in District 28, which is the West Valley cities of Cupertino, Saratoga, Los Gatos, Montesquieu, and Campbell, West San Jose, Cambrian, Almaden, Willow Glen, and then it goes up to the hills to uh, the county lines of Lexington Hills and the reservoir included in that too. Um, and I've been on the Saratoga City Council for the past eight years. I've been mayor twice. Um, I grew up in northern New Jersey, um, where I went to grammar school, elementary school, uh, middle school, high school, and then I attended uh, Fairfield University in Connecticut, which is kind of like um, an East Coast version of Santa Clara. I guess I would kind of consider that. Um, I spent two years there, and then I decided I was going to change my major, so I went to a state college in New Jersey, a little less expensive, and I paid my own way through college, so I, you know, money was, not, was, uh, was a consideration for sure. And, um, and after going to Ramapo for a year, or ha actually one semester, um, I realized that the teachers at the two schools were entirely different. The teachers at Fairfield were there, and, and they were really preparing me to go to grad school. The teachers at Ramapo College had all worked in the business world, and they were teaching me stuff that I could apply in the business world when I got out of college. So I did not have an intent to go to grad school right away. I, I feel personally that if you're going to go to get grad school for business, you know, to get a, an MBA, you really need to have that business experience in between college and your MBA because it gives you, to me, a broader background and an ability to really um, apply the things that you learn in a better way because you've experienced some of it. So I decided to stay at Ramapo, and I ended up with a, uh, a Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics and Business Administration, so I had a double major. And um, so how has education helped me to get where I am today? Um, I've taken a very interesting route to get where I am today. Um, I started my career with IBM as a programmer, that's what we call them then, now it would be a engineer or software developer or you know whatever kind of title you want to put to it um, and I thoroughly enjoyed that I after you know many years of schooling it was really neat to produce something and when I felt like I was writing programs I'm accomplishing something I'm printing the reports the company needs to manage the business or one of the systems I had created the um, second largest number of customer mailings it was a, a there was an investment tax credit that customers can get uh, that the government allowed. And so we produced the, uh, the documents that they needed for that. So it was, it was really, I had, a, I had a really enjoyable time doing that. Um, and then I realized that programming, while it was fun and interesting, um, it, I needed people. I needed to be with more kinds of people. So I went out into the sales world and I was in the technical side of sales. And so all of my education in terms of the technical things that I learned, I was still able to apply, but I applied them in a way that I was dealing with people and helping the sales reps to sell products. But to me, it was all about helping the client. What products did we have that would help the client to do things better? And that's kind of where I, I, I honed my own, um, I guess, need or, or uh, my passion and my, and my path in life, which is to help people. And so after many years at IBM and I had moved out to California, um, I went to work for Microsoft um, and I ran the sales office in Los Angeles for Microsoft. And then I went on into the computer sales channel, we call it, um, and I built service organizations. So when you know, there's companies that sell hardware and software, I built teams of people that would help put them together for various companies. And then along the way, I got involved in politics a little bit after I moved up to California. And so I took that, ability, that, that need, that desire to help people to the next level, which was, and this is after many years of volunteering and all kinds of things, but um, at my city council, that's really what I feel I've been trying to do for the last eight years is to help people, help prepare our city for the future, help um, when people have specific issues, and I'm, my education helped me in that I'm a problem solver. And so my background, in, and specifically in the science and technology uh, courses that I took, really helped me to hone my skills in problem solving. Um, 
you guys probably take, I know you take sciences in high school, you have to. Um, that's a lot of what you're learning, right? It's that process you go through, whether it's a, you know, a, a chemistry lab or a biology, you know, there's a process that you follow through. And I've learned to, to apply that in everything that I do. So it's been, uh, it's been really, really fun for me. I mean, I, I, I love helping people and to be able to try to solve problems. I, I now have a method to go about that, so it's been great. Um, do you guys want to ask me? You know, how many, this is probably more interactive than we just rattle in there. Um, do you think you could give us an example of how, like, for example, the knowledge you learned in, um, for example, college really mm -hmm. helped you um, with a problem? Um, again, I think that that's a hard, that's really hard, because I remember actually thinking after I got out of college, am I ever going to use any of this stuff? <laughs> But what, what I can say is that certainly my, um, being a math major, you know, I took a lot of advanced math classes, I took a lot of computer science classes, and then starting my career as a software developer for IBM, certainly those skills apply. The logic as to how you, or the, the path you follow when you create a program. Um, you, you design it, you then code it, then you test it, and then you put it into production. And so, Having understood that process, that certainly helped me a lot. Um, but I think more than anything else, what I really was able to apply was the process of learning and applying that learning. And and that's something that it's I don't I don't know how to best describe it, but it truly is something that in every aspect of your life, the things that you learn and you know teachers are are helping you to understand a process. How do you write a paper? You know, you, you go out and you do research, you, you first pick a topic, then you do research, then you write the paper, then you proofread your paper, hopefully we proofread our papers, right? And then we turn it in for a grade. And those processes are what we use in life in, in most of the business, you know, like for example, the business things, whether I was in a marketing role or a sales role or a sales management role. Um, and then I think the other thing is how, how do you help people to do better? I was in management for most of my, my career, um, probably half my career at IBM, and then afterwards it was all management. Um, right now I own my own small business, so um, that's what I do. And experiencing how the teachers tried to teach me things has helped me to try to help other people. Um, and what I realized is I can't necessarily teach someone, they have to want to learn it. And so that, that's a lesson that I've taken from my education um, and, and I've been able to carry that through. So, yeah. So, what else? What else? Um, we, 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 oh, what is it's One of the questions, how did your background affect the, um, the way that I view education? First of all, I grew up and I had parents that, that cared deeply about education. Neither one of my parents ever went to college. I was the first person in my family to graduate from college. Um, on both sides, nobody in my family had ever gone to college. So, and, and that's, you know, my, my ancestors track back, track back to this country for a very, very long time. So we were working families. We, we did not, college was not something that was necessarily in the picture. Um, but I knew coming out of high school, my parents ingrained that in me that if, you know, if you, if this is, if you are to succeed in life, college education is really important. Now, I have since, I've learned that, that, that that's true, that you really have to have that college education. But it isn't right for everybody. There are people who are better skilled with their hands and can make a better living applying it in a trade than necessarily being that college graduate. However, most people find that some college courses will help them in whatever career. I've got friends that are, um, that are plumbers or electricians, and they're great at what they do. The college courses that they've gone and taken, whether or not they've graduated, have helped them to hone their business skills or their, their man project management skills in a way that they can be better and grow their business then rather than just being, okay, I'm going out and I'm going to install a light in your house or I'm going to, you know, wire a factory or whatever. 
um, they they can they get better. So um, so my um, my background um, has has helped me to understand that college is really really important for most people, but not everybody. And I think that that's something that in this world, and, and especially in the Silicon Valley, we've ingrained in everybody's head, college, 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 college. There are some people that maybe college isn't the right thing. They maybe need to go do a trade first and figure out what they want, and then get the college courses to help them in their business. And, and it's because sometimes you, everybody forms their path at different times, you know, and that's one of the things I think it's a little bit of something that's wrong with our high school system today. We have, our, in fact, our whole educational system. We, we teach people the same, same thing the same way. And many of us, we're all individuals. So many of us learn differently. Like I'm sure, you know, you, Christine, Wilson, and I, we probably would all each learn differently. You may be more of a visual learner. You may be more of a um, book person. I may be more of a, an auditory le learner. And I need to have it told to me usually several times, as a matter of fact, but, um, you know, so I think that we have to, to learn what it, how it is we best learn, and then be able to um, find a method that gets us that education in the way that we need it. So, yeah, so you talked a lot about college. So yeah. Can you elaborate more on the influences that education had in life before college, like in high school? Or okay. The sure. Um, now, and I was a bit of a cut-up in school. I, I don't they still use that word, I don't even know. I was um, kind of a little bit of a clown at times. And, um, but I was a really good student. My parents always taught me that you had to get good grades. You had to study hard. You had to, and, and they would make sure that we sat down at the table. And although, well, and I, I think every few years they come out with a new way of learning something. Math is especially, like when I was growing up, they had the new math. Well, now they have the newer math. <laughs> it's kind of, I know when my girls were going through both grammar school, middle school, and high school, um, the, I'm looking at the way they learn math, and I'm like, this is, this is crazy. But my parents had the same thing. The math that I learned, it, the, 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 the math itself was the same, but how you actually get to the result was a little bit different. They're trying to attune your mind to, um, to solve the problem. And again, this is where I think the solution to the problem, how to solve the problem, is almost more important than the actual result you get. Because if you learn how to solve that problem, you will ultimately get to the answer. But you can apply that, that problem-solving technique to lots of different problems. It's not just the one that you had. So growing up, I think part of the reason that I, I'm blessed is that my parents had a, a focus on education. They said, you know, that I needed to study. They, they helped me to have to spend the time, make the time, to sit down and study. They made sure that I didn't have the number of distractions. I mean, today, I honestly, God, my kids growing up, it's like between the forms of communications with, you know, all the cell phones and the media and the electronics and wireless internet everywhere. It, I, you guys don't know how e how great you have it. I mean, I know you know that, but. It's so much more difficult. When I was growing up, it was like, if I wanted to get somewhere, I jumped on my bike. It wasn't like I had an iPhone that I could call you Uber and, you know, get a ride somewhere or whatever. So um, it was, uh, it was more, much more of an analog world, I think, when I, when I grew up. But because I had that focus from my parents, that ingrained in me the sense that I needed to continue my education and that it was an important aspect of my life. We find in California, and in fact, in just about every world, every country in this world, that there is an achievement gap, and a lot. And part one, of, there's there's achievement gaps between men and women. There's achievement gaps between um, different ethnicity, ethnicities. There's di there's gen there's um, uh, achievement gaps between uh, socioeconomic statuses. So people that are in lower income, they typically don't perform as well in school as those that are in higher income, and and it's unfortunate. But a lot of it has to do with what kind of opportunities are these kids given and what kind of teachers are there to do it. So right now, we, like in California, we have, I think, that one of our problems, and there, there are several, but one of them is that teacher tenure um, allows teachers to stay in position, even if they're not good teachers, for a long period of time. There's a, there's a whole long, arduous process. And 
and I mean, first of all, we want good teachers. We, we need teachers. I don't think it's, I think it's kind of lost its, it's uh, luster as a great career, but teach, I, I've always wanted to teach. It's something that, it's still in my, in my mindset that I want to be a teacher, and middle school is where I want to teach, because I think it's a very difficult um, time in people's lives, and I think that that's, but, but my experience with, with middle schoolers is that that's when they're, they most want to learn, too. They're, they're, they don't want you, you'll never hear them say, hey, I want to learn something, usually you won't. Um, but I really believe that they do because I've, I've had that experience teaching Sunday school and things like that. So, um, but uh, I think that um, I don't know. Did I kind of, did I yeah. sort of answer the question? I don't want to rattle on too long. <laughs> um, I have a question regarding. Sure. Um, so when you first entered college, yep. um, did you really have an idea of what path you're going to take, or oh. did you find it out like? Really good question. Through? Really good question. Um, I, I was good in math. I was great in math and sciences. That was my that, my forte. So I, I had a feeling that I was going to end up in some kind of a you know math science career. Um, I was okay in English. I love writing and reading. So you know that wasn't so bad either. But I just felt that science is where I wanted to go. And I got involved in eighth grade with a computer. And we had we had one computer in the school district and. Uh, you guys wouldn't probably remember this. If you look it up on Wikipedia, there was a thing called punched tape. It was paper tape that holes got punched in it, and that was your program. You'd, you'd write a little program, and you'd create it in punch tape, and that's how you'd feed it in and out of the computer, another computer or another workstation. And, um, and so I got involved in that, and I really liked it. So I thought, okay, whatever can get me involved in this, that's, that's really cool. I kind of liked it. Um, and, and looking back on it now, I think one of the reasons I had that is that in school you don't always you produce a paper, but you don't really manufacture anything, right? You don't, and it's like, I'm, I'm a guy that I love to see results. So writing a computer program and having it print out or pr even print out a paper tape or print out a piece of paper with a report on it, to me I was producing something. So I had that in my head. It really wasn't until probably my junior year that I really decided I wanted to be a math major. But then what do I do with that? I had no clue. I really didn't. Um, my senior year, I got an internship at IBM working in a, uh, a kind of a forecasting area. And so I was the computer guy creating the graphs and stuff. When as an intern, you do whatever they want you to do. But I really enjoyed it. And so then I was able to parlay that into a career at IBM, starting off as a programmer and then going into the other aspects, maintaining my technical background. But when I started, I really, you know, and that's one of the things I, I see, like my daughter just started at Alabama, and she has to declare, you know, what college, is she going to be in the College of Education, the College of, you know, Science, or blah, blah, blah. So she originally wanted to be a, um, she thought, a physical therapist. And she started looking at the courses. And there's a lot of biology, of course. You've got to learn about kinesiology. And she didn't do that well in biology in school, in high school. So she was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. So she's now changed the college, the business college, and she's going to look for a degree in business. I don't think she has any idea what she might do with that later on. But at least she knows, okay, I'm going to focus on some things that, and we'll see if, it, if she sticks with it. Um, I, I actually thought about changing my major. I was a math major at Fairfield University, and when I went to Ramapo, I was going to change to business. And I actually took a bunch of accounting courses, um, and I found I really didn't like them. It was, it was too droll or something. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I ended up going back and switching to math again, and that's what I graduated with. And, and I, I'm telling you, I was so lucky because I had teachers in mathematics that it's, it can be very ethereal. I mean, when you're solving nth dimensional equations in nth dimensional space, that's kind of, it's out there, right? These guys had done this in the business world. And so for them to explain how this would apply itself in the business world was very, very unique. And, and I, I think it helped me a lot. It's helped me to understand that there, this, this education is good, but then again, that how do you solve that problem is probably the most important thing you take away. What else?
So you guys, are you guys both seniors this year? Yeah. 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 At Monta Vista, right? Um, I'm at Monta Vista. Yeah, I'm at He's at oh, you're at Pally. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, good. Good school. Good school. Got some I good have, sports yeah. programs there. No, we do. <laughs> I have one more question. Sure. So, um, so I know you talked about a lot of like hands-on applications, mm -hmm. which, which is why education is important, yeah. so you can learn the process. So, if you could like sum up. Like if I were to ask you what is education, like could you sum up what that is in like a succinct response? Wow. Um, what is education? Education is the um, is the process of learning, and and so that so to me that's what education is. It's the process of learning. Now there's difference between being educated and educating. So an educator would be someone who tries to, does their best to enable someone to have the desire and the aptitude to learn. So to develop your own internal processes as to how you go about that and how you do it best. Um, and then as an educatee, the person who's learning, it's, I have to figure out, so education from the perspective of the learner is how do I best get the knowledge of whatever subject it is and be able to uh, replicate that in whatever method I need to, whether it's a lab and so it's a process or it's a test and I have to, um, you know, not necessarily regurgitate it, but, but put it into the, the, the correct format so that I can answer the questions correctly. Is that kind of, yeah. is that helpful? Because yeah. I, I do think that you need to look at, education isn't just one thing, like most things in this world. Um, you have to look at it from different perspectives. And that's the only way you can truly understand, because it's a system. It, it truly is a whole system. Um, kind of on my city council, when somebody comes to me with a problem, that's one side of that problem. There's at least one more, it's, you know, the, the, the opposite side of it, right? But there are probably five or six other ones. And those are, I have to, I, as a city council member, I have to try to put myself in the shoes or in the seat of each of those other perspectives and see this problem from that perspective, then I can make the best decision. So it's, that's the process that I've gone through and it's an education process. How do I learn the most that I can about this problem to be able to prepare my city for the future, you know, solve this problem so that it doesn't come back or that it, um, it, can, it, can, it can grow with the environment and not become an issue again. So it's, that's kind of the way I look at things. Helpful? Yeah. For, um, for example, when um, you were applying for like a job, okay. or for example, the internship at IBM, yeah. did they um, really look closely into like whether or not you had gotten, um, gotten a college degree or so on? Well, at that point, it was actually through my college that I got the internship. So many companies work with schools, with colleges, to, you know, hey, we, we've got these openings for interns. Um, my older daughter is going to college, and she's working at a company called A10 Networks. She was working as an intern with the summer. And there's a whole class of interns. They're in all different aspects. They're in IT. They're in um, engineering. They're in marketing, she was in human resources, um, but she just ended up getting a part-time job out of it. So they actually offered her a job halfway through the internship, it was kind of cool. But so many times the schools will work with businesses because they want to bring interns on, because that's a way to get somebody that, hey, you've got some knowledge and ability, but you don't, you're not fully developed yet, but if we can get you on board, well, maybe you want to be on board after you graduate. And, and we'll get to know a little bit about you too. So it works both ways. But then there's a lot of times where um, the, the internship kind of thing would happen because you're pursuing it. And it, it, vary, it varies by business and it varies by school. Um, there's, uh, it, every circumstance is a little bit different. Um, but I can tell you, it does take a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of effort and sometimes it's frustrating. I remember after I graduated, looking for a job. And I had 
I had my, uh, my internship with IBM, they extended it to be a part-time job. Um, so when I, and that was right before I graduated, but I remember applying to all these different companies, and throwing my resume and, you know, nice cover letter. Um, it wasn't like we did things electronically to the way we do today. It was all, you know, person to person. I would go knock on doors and things. And then I ended up getting a job offer from IBM in programming, in the software development arena. So uh, that was a blessing, because I, I knew the company already a little bit, and they knew me, and I think that helped. So it's, those internships are really important, especially if you start to hone the area you want to work in. If you want to work for a high-tech development company, look for an internship at a high-tech development company. If you want to want to be in, um, in, in marketing, and you're not specific about the industry, look for a Shiat Day, or a, a, a company that does marketing and advertising as their business and try to get an internship there because those those things pay big dividends yeah. well you were mentioning how the computer um during the time was like a for programming you had to use a tape yeah we had a paper tape it was uh yeah it was um i mean i remember carrying around this big spool of paper tape it was about that thick and it had little holes in it and that's how we used to put it and then when I worked for IBM, we had punched cards. It wasn't like everything was online, because it wasn't at that point. IBM actually sold systems to people that were online, but I remember walking around with my computer program, it was a bunch of a stack of punched cards. And if you go to the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, have you guys been there? Yeah. Okay, so you see this kind of stuff, and you see the original PCs and stuff, with the big floppy disks, right, the different kind of stuff. Um, you know, nowadays you got a little thumb drive that holds as much well, probably 50 times as much memory as the whole computer had at the time when they, for the first PCs came out. Um, so yeah, so it was just different media. Um, same concept, you write a program, you have to save it somewhere. Um, they didn't have the storage mechanisms, the hard drives and things that they do today. So um, we had paper tape, you know, God forbid you got it wet. Because when you get paper wet, it doesn't exactly have the same consistency, right? You can't feed it through the machine the same way. Yeah, so I've been through a lot of technology changes, but you guys have too. You guys have seen a lot of technology change. More probably, it's like you get twice as many changes now in half the time. You know, it's amazing. So, yeah, there's uh, a lot of interesting things out there. Did you used to have to write, type things up in a typewriter? I did. I actually, in fact, the, the other day I was looking for my typewriter. <laughs> Um, just because I was like, God, I know I have one somewhere. Um, but yeah, we we did not have computers with printers attached. I had a, my resume was written up on a typewriter, and sometimes I'd put a piece of carbon paper, which was an actual piece of paper that had uh, kind of soft ink on one side and another piece of paper, and then you, you had to type kind of hard so that the impact of the character on the paper would go through. So you now have two copies. But when you made a mistake, oh, what a mess. It's like, we didn't, it's not like we had white out, so now I'm trying to erase with a little eraser without wrecking the paper. Most times it was, oh, well, let's start again. So it, it was very difficult. In fact, in, in college, um, we didn't have computers that we could do homework and stuff on. I actually typed papers for people. Like somebody would have a psychology major would have a 20 page paper that they'd do. I charged a dollar a page to type their papers because I could type 60 words a minute. And I made some mistakes, but not too many. And so um, I was, that's one of the things that I did to make money during college. I typed papers for people. So <laughs> a lot has changed. You don't, you don't see that today, I'm sure. That's a really cool um, business. It was, you know, it was pretty lucrative because I, but then of course it took away from my ability to do stuff for myself. So. You know, but I had fun, you know, it's like I was sitting there, I, and I'm actually reading these papers as I do them. So I was learning a lot. I love to learn. And that's, that, you know, you talked about what did, what did your background bring, and I think that that quest for knowledge, when you have it, and I didn't have for a long, I don't know if I always had it, but it, it just grew in me over time. And I love to, even today, I love to learn things. So it's pretty cool. Now, awesome. Um, do you have any other questions? You covered everything pretty well, very well. Well, good. I, 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 didn't, I wasn't quite sure where 
well, what parts of education we were talking about, what you wanted to know. So it's kind of a broad topic. So yeah, yeah. Curvy. I didn't know if it was like the future of California education. Or, you know, like, you know, like, now I'm out there reading papers and I'm like trying to. But there's a yeah, but I, college is so important, especially.